So I think this is what you drew? Um, yes. Okay. Now, first of all, um, since we're done, um, mm -hmm. I forgot my double bond on. Ha, ah, yeah. Now, this is important. Um, you, you're likely to see cases with multiple functional groups. Well, the lithium aluminum hydride doesn't reduce alkenes. Okay. It reduces carboxylic acids and aldehydes and ketones. So we're not going to have anything happening to the double bond. Good. This is not getting reduced here. Also, um, since you're not using bond line notation, you're obligated to show the hydrogens on this yeah. carbon. How many hydrogens do I need to add to the carbon? Two. Right. If you wanted to, you could have just write it like this. Oh, okay. In bond line notation, we're not obligated to show the hydrogens. Oh. But if you actually put in the C, the convention is we have to show the hydrogens. So either of these would be a correct answer. So you did get the basic idea. Um, but make sure that we don't reduce other functional groups that are not affected by the lithium aluminum hydride. And here we have to put in the right number of hydrogens. That's fine. mechanism for this reaction. Let's start by just describing in words. Any idea what do you, what do you think would happen first here? To start with, do you know what this stands for? C6H5? Benzene? Yeah, that's a benzene ring. That's right. So, um, and we do not expect that to have any effect here on the reactivity. Okay. It's just something that was thrown in to confuse us. It's just uh, a symbol for a benzene ring. Okay. Maybe instead of to save time, we can just write about pH, because that's a phenyl substituent. So that's not really going to affect things. Well, any guesses about what might happen first here? Um, a nucleophilic attack from a hydrogen on the Carboxylic uh, carbon. Uh, okay. So, so you're suggesting that the hydride might attack this carboxylic carbon. acid. Yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Uh, what were you going to say? Uh, a nucleophilic attack on the carbon of the carbonyl of the carboxylic acid, the carbonyl carbon. Okay. Let's think about that. So yeah. So what type of functional group is this on the right? It's a carboxylic acid. And what type of functional group is this on the left? A ketone. Good. Uh, what's the name for this reagent? Uh, sodium borohydride. That's right. Now, have we learned, can sodium borohydride react with aldehydes and ketones? Um, does sodium borohydride react with aldehydes and ketones? You, you can go back in your notes if you need to. Does sodium borohydride react with aldehydes and ketones? Yes. Good. By the way, let's put a negative charge on that boron. Yeah. We were saw saying that, like lithium aluminum hydride, sodium borohydride will react with aldehydes and ketones. But it's less reactive. Right. So does sodium borohydride reduce carboxylic acids? Um, no. 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 Does lithium aluminum hydride react with carboxylic so, acids? Um, yeah. uh, uh, yes. So it's going to attack the ketone then. OK. So this is kind of similar to the previous problem where there was one functional group that would react and one that wouldn't. So your instructor went over a couple of examples like that in the notes. That's a pretty typical test question here to give you multiple functional groups. Okay. This is called selective reduction, where you have to figure out who's going to be reduced. So sodium borohydride, as we were talking about a minute ago, is less reactive than lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is so reactive that it does that weird reduction of carboxylic acids, despite the fact that it was hard to figure out how the mechanism would work. Sure. Sodium borohydride is not that reactive. It's not going to reduce this uh, carboxylic acid group. OK, so you figured out that instead it's going to reduce this ketone. So let's, for review, let's go through the mechanism for that. Let's show the sodium borohydride reducing the ketone group.
Okay, so here's the final product that the instructor mentioned. So again, this is testing. If there's more than one functional group, it might not be both of them that are in the reaction. Lithium aluminum hydride will reduce carboxylic acids, but sodium borohydride won't. So both sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride will attack an aldehyde or a ketone, but only lithium aluminum hydride can reduce the carboxylic acid. So if, if, if uh, lithium aluminum hydride was in there, would you get uh, you get reduction of both? I think so. Ketone and the carboxylic acid. I think so. I'm not 100 percent sure because that um, in order to do that, you have to have multiple lots of negative charges because sure. there would be a bunch of negative charges here and here. So I'm not 100 percent sure what would happen there, but that, that seems like a good guess. Maybe the lithium aluminum hydride would reduce both of these. At least it certainly has a much better chance than the sodium borohydride. All right. Yeah, a couple weird things. Usually we add the water or alcohol in the same step as the sodium borohydride. I'm not 100% sure why your instructor waited to add the water in this case. Um, also, the sodium borohydride won't reduce the carboxylic acid. I might have expected that it would at least deprotonate it. Um, but even if it did deprotonate it, that might get canceled when we add water or acid in the second step. Maybe to be sure, maybe it would be better to add H3O plus, and that way we know this is going to get protonated even if it got deprotonated somewhere along the way. All right, so there's a couple things I'm not 100% sure about here. But the key thing that was getting tested is sodium borohydride attacks aldehydes and ketones, but it doesn't nucleophilically attack carboxylic acids. Okay. So on your exam, watch out for molecules with multiple functional groups. Um, don't just assume that the, the first functional group that you happen to look at is the one that's going to get attacked. You might have to decide which of those is more likely to get attacked. All right, the next thing that's covered here in the lecture notes was esterification. And that's a very important reaction that's pretty sure to be in the test. But I think there was pretty good coverage of that in the, um, the video series that you saw. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff we haven't gotten to yet. So I think we'll just totally skip over that. Um, but if you don't remember esterification very well, you might want to re-watch that part of the other video series, because I am pretty confident that would be on the test.